What does the word disciplinary conjure up in your mind? The root of it's quite interesting. It comes from the word discipline. And most people tend to think of the Middle English definition, which is about almost punishment for some sort of misdemeanor, forgetting about the original Latin root, which is about instruction and imparting knowledge to other people. I think if we concentrate as organisations more on the Latin side and imparting knowledge, we can avoid situations where we end up needing to have formal disciplinary procedures. So, what is a disciplinary? It's a formal action when someone's performance has fallen below standard or when their behaviour has fallen below the standard you expect. The reason for carrying out a disciplinary is to set very clear guidelines of what's expected and to get that person back on the right track. They aren't about punishing people in the first instance. Disciplinaries set the scene for needing to improve performance. They're there to ensure that the member of staff is aware of what's expected of them and can work towards achieving that. Disciplinaries should be used when previous attempts at informal resolution have failed or if the matter is something that's gross misconduct, in which case you need to implement a disciplinary process or procedure straight away. The most important thing to remember when carrying out a disciplinary is that you've got to follow process to the letter. If you don't, you'll trip up on it later on if it goes to, say, appeal or even worse if it goes to tribunal. Good management practice hopefully means you won't be at the stage of using disciplinaries on a regular basis. If you recruit, induct and train the right people, you'll end up in a situation where they want to perform as well as the organisation wants them to perform. If you do need to go through a disciplinary process, there's some key things that you must remember. The first is make sure you have the right policy or procedure in front of you. You'll be amazed how many times organisations trip themselves up by having more than one version of a policy so that it's very difficult when it comes to say an appeal stage to be able to work out which policy was relevant and which one applied at the time. Talk to other managers. Find out what they did when they went through a disciplinary process and make sure you learn from their experience. You need to make sure you follow the ACAS standard as an absolute minimum. This is that you need to establish the facts, inform the employee, hold a meeting with the employee. This meeting needs to be different to you establishing the facts. You should allow the employee the right to be accompanied to that meeting and you need to give the employee the opportunity to appeal should they so wish. Evidence is key to managing your success when carrying out disciplinaries. You need to be able to demonstrate that you've covered every single step of the process. You need to be able to show that you've given the employee every opportunity to improve and that you've made it very clear to that employee how they need to improve and in what way. Part of this evidence gathering is about covering your back. Don't catastrophize, but think, have you done all that you would expect or all that might be expected of you if it went to appeal or if it went to tribunal? What sort of things might someone reasonably have expected you to have done to have tried to have resolved the situation in a less formal way? Have you done that? And more importantly, have you got the evidence to show that you've done that? To summarise, try and sort out informally what's going on. If that fails, the key things to remember are that you must follow process and you need to follow that process to the letter if it goes to appeal or if it goes to a tribunal. And you need to make sure that you've got clear written evidence of all the steps you've taken both before the disciplinary and during it.